If you want to get their attention, you better use some pop culture or you better get out of here. You have to, you have to be relevant. Yep. And, and just for the record, I'm not a millennial, but I use pop culture and I just feel like if it's a way to connect. In the media, I see that HBCUs now are progressing and the word is being spread. Now everybody knows about it. I definitely have noticed the resurgence of HBCUs in like like mainstream media and like on social media and with celebrities like rocking, you know, HBCU nail ya. I think that you have to meet the students where they are. And so if you you're if you're not doing that, you're missing a moment by not including pop culture. There's definitely blackish <laughs> with how um I remember was his name Dre or something? I, and I don't really watch the show, but basically I remember how he went to Howard in the show and my mom was like, oh, I went to Howard. And I was like, yeah, yes you do. I've been excited to see some of our celebrities speak about their HBCU experience and or use their platforms to highlight HBCUs. I know that most recently we have the uh, homecoming video that came out. For me, that was a lot of fun. Be shallow. <laughs> really put HBCUs kind of back on the forefront and also put HBCUs in front of white folks because I don't think they knew about our schools really. And now everybody looks at Beyonce and everybody's like, oh my God, she just did this whole homecoming and it's just like, okay, now I want to do it. You know, but, but that's the tip of the iceberg, right? It's what you get in an experience of going to an HBCU, but it's not what makes and HBCU. If, if say for instance a pop culture artist or some makes a puts out a, a stereotype of HBCUs or just misinformation, mm -hmm. that's the scary part. You know, because they have such a big a platform, if they put something out there like that, you know, that's gonna go viral. I do think that our celebrities highlighting HBCUs as received by a young person without guidance or a young person who's not doing his or her additional research it could have a negative impact on um, what a young person would assume they would get from an HBCU, but likewise, it could open up a young person to think about an HBCU as a legitimate educational experience. And then, you know, some of them know more about HBCUs than they really even knew. Like, if you bring up um, Stomp the Yard, or you bring up, like, you know, um a different world, they'd be like, oh yeah, like I understand like, you know, what the, you know, what that means kind of in a surface level way, but our goal is to help them understand the history and like the significance and help them understand like they, there were no schools prior to HBCUs for people of color and for black people, you know. I want more celebrities if we're talking about people who come through as artists and perform at our schools. I want them to give money. Like mm -hmm. you might not be able to be like the brother who eliminated the debt for the guys at Morehouse. <laughs> However, those small things, they count. I was on campus when A Different World was filmed. So that was really a doubly special time to see what I was experiencing in some respects. HBCUs were popping in the 90s. I'm from the Different World Cosby Show era. And so when I would go to, when I would come home from school, people would be like, so is it like Hellman? <laughs> you know, is it Dwayne Wayne? And I was like, no, but there's Whitley. And to see the black college experience on television was uh, really, really positive. Having had that as a lived experience, I believe to this day that A Different World did a good job in depicting what it is you get and gain from an HBCU um, in a way that uh, I've not seen recently. So in the 90s, we saw a lot more of celebrities and people of prominence promoting HBCUs and it died down, I think because there were less people really attending HBCUs. You know, because maybe we've had less struggle during those times that it caused us to maybe forget a little bit about like where, where we came from, where our roots were. What irks me a lot is when celebrities and pop culture, or just pop culture in general in the media, just look at the bigger HBCUs. That irks yeah. me. That irks me. Yeah. That, yeah. That, that irks me. Being in the space of being able to partner in convening HBCUs, I've learned that there are a lot more than the ones you usually hear about in particular reports that get published on an annual basis. Even though people know about HBCUs, they know about 
the well-known ones. Like if I was to walk up to a random person on the street and be like, name me some HBCUs, Howard Spellman, Hampton, Morehouse, you know? And I want them to know like, it's so many more HBCUs than that. What about your boss? What about Dell State? What about Bowie? What about UMS? What about John C. Smith? You know what I'm sure. saying? You know, that's, See, that's the part of keeping the the history, you know, putting that out there. Oprah went to Tennessee State. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, the billionaire of America well, went to Tennessee State. Out. And also, Tennessee State isn't even necessarily one of the schools that people think of, like, the elite HBCUs. Right. And so, yeah, the billionaire came out of that school, sweetie. So, <laughs> you know? Again, the more we inform the masses of our story, the more I think even pop culture will be more informed. You know what I'm saying? More informed about who we are as institutions. <laughs>